All right, it says consider the following reaction. A plot of ln of concentration of x versus time gives a slope of a line um, with that's minus 9.44 times 10 to the minus 4 per second. So when we look at this uh, graph, okay, if we graph the integrated first order rate law, ln of concentration of A at some time equals negative kt plus the ln of the concentration of A initially. And we look at this as y equals mx plus b. What we find is that the slope of the line is time. So if we, um, excuse me, the slope of the line is negative k. So if we graph on the x-axis time and on the y-axis the ln of the concentration of a and we get a straight line, the slope of that line is equal to negative k. And this is for an integrated uh, first order rate law. And in the lecture they talk about this for a zero order rate law and for a second order rate law. And I believe there's a second order rate law question um, here, but I'm not 100% sure. So that's basically that. So it says, what is the rate constant for this um, reaction. The rate constant, negative k, equals the slope, right? Because y equals mx plus b, m is the slope. So again, we put on the x-axis t, we put on the y-axis ln of a. So the negative slope, which in this case, k is equal to just this value times negative 1, which is 9.44 times 10 to the minus 4 per second. Next thing says, what is the rate law for this reaction? Well, if you get a straight line for a first order reaction and we only have one reactant, we know that this is first order with respect to x. We wouldn't get a straight line if it wasn't first order with respect to x and we wouldn't have a slope to use. So therefore, the rate has to be equal to k concentration of x. Again, there's only one reactant, so we don't have to worry about any other reactant. We know that this is first order with respect to x x. Finally, it's for this uh, part of the video, it says, what is the half-life of this reaction? Well, for a first order reaction, the half-life is constant, independent of the concentration. So for each individual reaction. So it's a, if for the half-life of first order reactions, the T uh, one half is equal to 0 0.693 over K. So it's 0 0.693 divided by 9.44 times 10 to the minus 4 per second, which gives us a half-life of 734 seconds. So we can determine all of these things um, using the slope. So if you haven't already watched the beginning of this video, it's a good idea to do that. But for part D, it says if the reaction starts with a concentration of X of 0 0.250 molar, what is the concentration of X after 250 seconds? So we already determined that this is a first order reaction and we know the integrated rate law for first order reactions. The advantage of the integrated rate law is it allows us to determine the concentration of X after some amount of time. So we need the LN of the concentration of X at some time equals negative kt, we know k, all right, we determined that up here, um, plus the ln of the initial concentration of x. So here, our variable is the concentration of x at some time. Specifically, the time is 250 seconds. We know k, we know t, 250 seconds, and we know the initial concentration of x. So t means after some time, and x uh, 0 means initially. So the ln of the concentration of x after some time is equal to negative k, which is 9.44 times 10 to the minus 4 per second, okay, times the 250 seconds plus the ln of the initial concentration of, um, of x, which is 0 0.250. I'm going to leave out the molar here. Okay, so the ln of the concentration of x at some time is equal to, if you multiply these two things together, you get negative 0 0.236 
And if you add, then you add to this, you get plus a negative 1.38. Okay, so when you take the ln of this in your calculator. So basically, you're just um, taking a negative and adding another negative. And what you get is the ln of the x at some time equals negative 1.62. So now we need to get rid of this natural log. To get rid of the natural log, you take e to this. On a lot of calculators, you hit the shift button or the second button and hit the ln. So it's above the ln, if you will. And then you take e to this. It has to be negative. Make sure it's negative or you won't get the right answer. And you find that the concentration of x after some time is equal to 0.197 molar. So the concentration of x decreased um, through time. Okay, And I took the molar out over here um, and then I added it back in over here. All right, Just for um, clarity, the units here get tricky when you start using natural logs and stuff like that. So basically um, that's uh, how we would do that. So this tells us the concentration after some time. The next question says, what is the concentration of y and z after 250 seconds? So note that 1x forms 1y and 1z. So because you get one of them, one of each of them, we have the initial concentration, 0 0.250 molar. That's what we started with. And we now only have 0 0.197 molar left, which means we lost... zero point zero five three molar x but it also means that we gained the concentration of y and the concentration of z because they're all one to one is zero point zero five three molar the concentration of x went down by point oh five three molar and each of these concentrations went up by point oh five three molar because they're all one to one all right, note that if you had double this, then whatever of this you lost, you'd gain twice as much of this. Or if you had three of them, you'd gain three times as much, so on and so forth. Um, so that's basically how that works. This math is tough and takes practice, so please make sure to practice.